Hey everybody, it's Catherine. Welcome to my channel where we talk all things beauty and fragrance. Not gonna lie to you, you guys, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed today. This bottom shelf here is all the new fragrances I've got that I need to review or that I want to review for you guys. Lucky for me, it is my summer break. Well, nearly. I have to work a few random days, but for the most part, it's summer break and I intend putting this out there manifesting it or however you want to say it i intend to really knock out a ton of reviews for you guys because i have a ton of fragrance samples i've spent money on just to do the review so you know what i gotta get it done i just gotta get her done if i experience something and i enjoy it i want to tell you guys about it and there has been so much lately that i have been so impressed with can't keep it to myself so without further ado let's get started with today's Navitas Parfums Ambrosia Imperial. AI the Great collaborated with Navitas Perfumes to create Ambrosia Imperial. If you guys know, Ambrosia also the Jello salad, but Ambrosia is thought to be the nectar of the gods. So Imperial, obviously we got some royal magic happening here. Let's open this baby up and get started. Obviously, quite the paperweight here. This is one considerable, luxury, exquisitely packed product here. So we're going to slide the casing off. This is my first Navitas Parfum, so um, I have gotten their Discovery set, but this is my first boxed Parfum, and apparently this isn't how they normally come wrapped. So hopefully I'll get another one at some point and we can compare the two, but my gosh, this is quality packaging here. So now you have like this faux leather box uh, emblazoned with the Navitas Parfums, and then the logo. open it up and again leather slide open the bottom oh and then this slides out apparently this is cardboard but it does feel like a smooth leather and then this is leather so Navitas Parfums open it up and though the satin is a little coffin-esque you have the bottle encased in it and then the little blip. So let's pull the sucker out, close up our box, package it back up because that's how I roll. I like things looking like I just bought them. And now the beautiful juice inside. As you can see, it's like a dented, gold capping with the Navitas Parfum at the top, Ambrosia Imperial. I have worn this a few times so I could do the review. Mm. And AI the Great herself said that she wanted it to be like a Bananas Foster type feel to it. Wow, this e I just noticed the, the label even. It's like a texturized. See that texture? That is cool. Well done, AI. Oh, and I it just I just put two and two together. Ambrosia Imperial, AI. That's cool, AI. Good job. When it first came out, it was kind of a expensive bottle. I don't really like blind buying perfumes, especially when they have a hefty price tag. I just I, I don't have disposable income like that where I can spend a large sum of money on something that I have no idea if I'm going to like it or not. So I did pass on the first round, but um, it sold out really quickly. They re-released it with another um, slight discount. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take the plunge and I bought it. And when I first took it out of the box, I was so afraid. I was so nervous to try it because, you know, $200 later, am I going to like it? Did I just waste $200? But I was very pleasantly satisfied. As I believe, AI the Great, AI wanted um, a fragrance that uh, was reminiscent of Bananas Foster. 
and I think she did a really good job of capturing the essence of that without making it too overtly sweet or like you're wearing food basically, like you're wearing a dessert, but still has the essence of smelling like a dessert. So this is a very gourmand, sweet fragrance. Navitas, as I understand it, they have their master perfumers and they uh, pair up with uh, influencers of sorts and the influencer and the master perfumer together create um, a product, the perfume, and this is one of those. Ambrosia Imperial is a fragrance for both women and men. It was created in 2023. The perfumer behind the line or behind the fragrance is Bert Bertrand Duchefort. Hope I didn't butcher that too badly. Top notes of the fragrance include banana rum, Davana Brazilian Orange, and Ceylon Cinnamon. The heart of the fragrance or the middle notes include dates, amberwood, jasmine, and orchid. The base notes caramel, whipped cream, benzoid, vanilla, saffron, and musk. Fringratica uh, rates it longevity-wise as being long-lasting, however moderate, eternal, or close seconds. In terms of sillage, very much a moderate rating, and they rate it as unisex, leaning a bit more female. I have really been into gourmands lately. I would consider Tiziana Terenzi a very gourmand line. AI the Great tends to have a lot of uh, fragrance similarities, as I do. Uh, it seems like when she really likes something, I either own it or was thinking about getting it. So I think we, we have very similar taste when it comes to perfume. There have been a few times where she's recommended something and I've been eh about it, but for the most part, we tend to be on par, which is why that I thought that I would really like her fragrance. If she created this, she put her name behind it and her name on it, apparently. Obviously one she was proud of, and so I kind of assumed I would love it as much as she did. That being said, I think I need to wear it a few more times. At this point, it's a very strong like, leaning love. Um, I would very much equate it with Tiziana Terenzi fragrances as it does have that bold gourmand yet uh, niche-esque feel to it. You can't necessarily pinpoint any one note at any one time. It seems to ring true among many niche fragrances that I have tried as of late. When you first spray the fragrance, I think that you can really smell the banana, you can really smell the rum. It has a very sweet gourmand inviting feel to it. Uh, not overly heavy, not overly sickeningly sweet or heavy, just very like Bananas Foster. You have that banana, you have that ice cream, you have the rum, but it's not uh, a super heavy weighted fragrance, or it's not a super heavy weighted dessert. It's not super thick like a cream pie or something. It's more like, you know, key lime pie where it's heavy, but yet it's still light and um, not overly filling, if that makes sense. Looking at the notes, it's easy to say, oh, then you smell this. Um, I think you can smell the date. You can smell the amber wood. It kind of uh, mellows out a bit and smooths. Uh, so you lose some of that sweet, sweet nature, but yet you never lose it completely because then when it, you, in the dry down, you have that caramel, the whipped cream, the benzoin, the saffron musk, all very grounding notes without making it ever heavy. It just stays gourmand. It stays warm, comforting, and snug like a cup of hot cocoa in the wintertime. I think this is more of an evening scent. Based on the heavier nature, I would say I would consider it more of an autumn winter fragrance. How That being said though, like I said, it's not a heavy gourmand. It's sweet. It's caramely. It's Bananas Foster, but it's not so heavy and so overtly sweet and sickeningly um, syrupy that you can't wear it in the summer. You can't wear it in those hot days where it's just going to um, explode off of your skin. It's still, it's so hard to explain. It's still gourmand, but more caramel as opposed to molasses, you know? I think it's a great date night fragrance. In terms of longevity, I got a decent wear out of it. Whether my nose got used to it or it did dissipate a bit, I'd say a good five hours before it was more uh, just an arm's length and then uh, more of a skin scent. In terms of sillage, I also would equate it more moderate. 
Um, you know, people at an arm's length away from you are going to experience it. It's not going to enter the room before you do. It's not going to stay in the room after you leave. But when you're in the room, people will be enjoying your presence. At a heftier price point, I think it's $275 retail. Somewhere around there, I'll put in the description the exact cost as well as where you can purchase it. But I think when you're spending a price tag such as that, you really you really need to have that SIAZ and longevity in order to um, compensate for the expenditure that you're making, for the investment that you're making in the fragrance. And you get that with this fragrance. I think you'll be satisfied with that. Uh, if you are wearing it out, you're going to be out for more than, you know, four or five hours. I would consider taking a decant with you to, you know, just freshen, refresh while you're out. If you want to make sure that you're going strong on your fragrance game while you're out. Many times I equate my fragrance reviews, my fragrances to an outfit. Uh, again, this is a unisex fragrance, so keep that in mind. However, I am a woman, so I tend to, you know, picture more of a feminine outfit. I would think definitely a bold colored cocktail dress of sorts. I'm thinking more bodycon, more uh, form-fitting, midi to midi length, one where you're showing off your assets. But again, a bold color because you're not one, you're not a wallflower if you're wearing this scent. You want to be noticed. It's not a, woo, look at me, uh, flashing neon light, but it is a, it's not a wallflower fragrance. It's one where, you know, you're not, you're not shy. You want people to notice your presence. If you're a man and you're comfortable wearing a sweeter gourmand scent, I think you could pull this off. You're just going to smell delicious, and that's just how it is. The fragrance we spoke of today, Navitus Parfums, Ambrosia Imperial. I would definitely recommend that you check this out. I hope to purchase more Navitus Parfums in the future, and hey, maybe someday I will be one of the influencers that collaborates with Navitus Parfums to create my own, so wouldn't that be fun? Uh, until then, being that this video is basically in honor of AI the Great, who in all honesty, um, I have followed from the start of my YouTube journey, and she really has blown up in the past few years that I alone have been doing this. She reached her 5,000 subscriber mark a few months after I'd started, and she just has blown up since then. And I thoroughly enjoy watching her reviews and her videos. She's hilarious and has great style, and I think she deserves and has worked for the success that she has been awarded. So way to go, AI. Thank you for everything that you've done for the YouTube community. And I can't wait to watch you as your journey continues. So in honor of AI the Great, I will sign off my videos as she does. So thank you guys for watching. Talk about it in the comments below as we always do. Remember to stay safe, stay great, be great, always strive for greatness. Catherine Cole signing out, but I'll see you in my next video. I love you all. I appreciate you all and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.